Hey kids, Miss Kulkarni here. I believe that you have seen the Alkenes addition reactions part 1. This is part 2 in which we are going to talk about the practical applications of all sorts of addition reactions in alkenes. Let's again review what alkenes are and what are the different types of addition reactions. So alkenes are unsaturated hydrocarbon and they contain at least one double bond and this double bond is the one which makes the alkenes reactive and ready to go the addition reactions. And we saw in the part one video that based upon the reactant which is getting added to alkene, we have these different types of addition reactions, hydrogenation, halogenation, hydrohalogenation, hydration and polymerization. So let's find out how we apply these reactions in our real life. The first one is hydrogenation. And as you know, this is adding hydrogen to an alkene with the end result as an alkene, which is all single bond compound. What are the practical applications of this reaction? It is mainly used in food industries. Have you heard about partially hydrogenated oils? That is the hydrogenation process. So what does it do? The partial hydrogenation of the polyunsaturated vegetable oils that produces compounds like margarine and also other partially hydrogenated oils. What's the advantage of this process? It makes the compound solids and as you know margarine is solid and the oils of course are liquid or semi-liquids and because it is solid it also increases the shelf life. So that's good for food industries. One more thing to note down, ethene is also used for accelerating the ripening of fruit in food industries. Next one is halogenation of alkenes. And in this reaction, alkenes react with halogens like chlorine, bromine or fluorine. And the reaction is shown here with bromine. So look carefully when bromine reacts what do we see? Bromine has brown color so when it reacts it forms a dibromo compound which is colorless. So that's pretty interesting. We can actually use this reaction for detection of unsaturation and what do we need to do for that? Just simply adding liquid aqueous bromine to see the color change and if it changes the color that will indicate that what we started with was an alkene. Next one is hydrohalogenation in which alkenes react with hydrohalogens like HBr, HCl that's hydrobromic acid or hydrochloric acid and we are going to end up having mono substituted haloalkanes as it is shown over here. So, what is the practical application for this? All the haloalkanes can readily undergo nucleophilic substitution reaction. That means the bromine in haloalkanes can be substituted easily by any other substituent like X. And therefore, these nucleophilic substitution reactions are used in organic synthesis of variety of molecules. So, pretty important there. Next one is hydration of alkenes. This is alkenes reacting with water and they form alcohol as it is shown in the figure. So we begin with an alkene and we get one carbon hydrogen and the second one gets the hydroxy group. That's our alcohol. Again, this process is very important process. First of all, this can be used for large scale production of ethanol and ethanol can be in turn used as a source for producing many other organic compounds. Now I am sure you must have heard ethanol used as a motor fuel. Ethanol can be also added. It's a biofuel additive to gasoline. Also alcohols are used in many reactions one of the important reaction is 
condensation reactions with carboxylic acids and what do they produce they produce esters which are used in perfumes and also in food industry let's move on the next process is polymerization of alkenes in this alkenes react with itself and form longer chains as it is shown in this reaction if we have many molecules and number of molecules of an alkene for example ethene they will react with each other and form a big long polymer and we call that as polyethene now how about if i have a substituent on that alkene for example r1 when this undergoes polymerization reaction it's going to react same way so we are going to have the polymer with that r1 group hanging out of that carbon and n number of molecules so by using this process we can have variety of different types of polymers produced and that's why polymer chemistry is a different branch of chemistry now we can make a number of polymers using this strategy but the most common polymers are polyethylene polypropylene polystyrene and polyvinyl chloride what are the important uses of these polymers polyethylene films what are those those are used in packaging materials what about the plastic bags we use in grocery store or plastic tupperware all these are polymers we can use many plastic products what about maybe surgical instruments equipments we use different type of plastic but still it is polymer then we also have polypropylene which is used in tires carpets in luggage what about polystyrene that can be used in housewares what about pvc which is polyvinyl chloride that is used in plumbing pipes so polymerization has not only opened up a new branch of organic chemistry but it has variety of practical applications however i want to just make a note that this also has caused some environmental hazards but still overall the addition reactions of alkenes have opened up so many practical applications so i guess you guys enjoyed the video i'll see you again in next video until then bye bye